had nothing. I hate this car. I hate this car. That's how far it made it. Why? Why do we have to have this thing? Why? Why? Oh, there he is. Look at Darren. Oh yeah. What uh, what you got there? Got the Vincitor here. Just came back from a rental. Got some more customers up front, ready to take it on there, but rental also. So just cleaning her up real quick. She's gonna go right back out. Perfect. Typical day. Typical day. On average, how many cars a day do you wash? Ooh, on the weekends, I'll probably wash about it easily 20 plus cars a day on the weekends. On a weekday, it'll average at about maybe 10 or 12. Now let me ask you this. What's up? Weekend during the summer. Ah, uh, weekend during the summer, we're washing like more than 30 cars per day, especially on the weekday. Ooh. Cars come back and go right back out every day. It's nonstop flips. Every day, you guys heard that, nonstop non flips. Non-stop. Let's see what Jesse is doing. Oh wait, I don't even see Jesse, but I do see Houston cooped up in the Lotus. <laughs> hey man. What's up? What, uh, what do you got going on here? Well, yesterday uh, I drove VJ's Lotus and um, I am very, very committed now to finishing mine. Like, very committed. I forgot how amazing a Lotus was and I barely even drove his car with with mine, mine could potentially make 20 to 30% more power than his. So I'm so prepared to get this done. And I have a couple things left to do. Set the shifter up, get the fuel lines run. And uh, pretty much that's gonna take us into the, the tuning stage. Uh, electrical is essentially done. We've had Andy over here helping me out with that. A lot of new stuff. We've got the uh, stereo Focal speakers over there on the desk all the interior pieces, just ready to bolt right on in. Uh, I'm setting up the shifter cables and the e-brake right now. I don't know, I think today I can get to about 99%. So earlier this morning, I had to run the two coolant lines, right, which is there. Uh, Jesse said that my, uh, my, my tank, expansion tank came in today. Is that true, Jesse? Yeah. Where's it at? Is that this box over here behind me? Mishimoto, really? Oh, that's a really fancy box. That's like a hundred dollar expansion tank. That box costs like 20 bucks. <laughs> They're crazy. All right, anyways, I'm getting started on this and I'm gonna finish this. So thank you for, for watching. I appreciate it. Jesse. What are you doing over here? Good morning. We're just doing, you know, retune service on the Huracons. After uh, the rodeo is here for a week, I think they're barely left today, right? Or yesterday. There's a lot of driving going on in these cars, so the brake pads are worn down a lot faster than normal. So we got the Huracon, we did brakes on today, the white one, now we're doing the black one. And I believe I have a 570 I gotta check next, so. Very busy cool. Day. So, question for you. Yeah. How long does it typically take to do the brakes on a Lamborghini Huracan? For me, it takes me about 30 minutes a wheel. 30 minutes a wheel. So yep. you're looking at about two hours for the full entire car. Pretty much. The good thing is these rotors, they pretty much last forever. So you just gotta make sure that your, your pucks are in. These are little pucks that go inside the uh, pistons. Okay. So make sure these are all there and Brake pads are nice, set them clean, and if you're ever you working on carbon ceramic rotors, uh, soap and water is the only thing you use to clean the rotors. You get a lot of dust, and you're gonna get your fingers on there because you're gonna rotate them. You can't use brake cleaners because the brake cleaner will actually eat the rotor up. So all I use is soap and water, and I get a clean microfiber towel every time I clean it when I'm done. So, quick tip. 
Okay. I got, <clears throat> excuse me, one more question for you. Yes, sir. You said two hours. What about at the dealer? If you were to take this car in to get your brakes done. The dealer, um, usually when we drop anything off or anything, it usually takes at least a day before we even get the car back. And that's if they work on it that day. So typically it could take at least minimum one day, sometime two days. We get this car turned around two hours and back on the road. So a little more efficient. You heard it here first, guys. That is efficiency. Jesse's middle name. That's right. All right. Why do I always have to drill stuff? I don't know. It gives me a bad rap, you know? Every time I come to do something over here, something always needs to get drilled. You know what? So stupid. This little pin is too short. Also, man. I need a longer one of these. <sighs> Why don't they just make it work with the stock stuff, you know? Like how hard would it have been just to include a pin that was just a little bit longer for me. Why? Why? Why, why, why would they do this to me? All right, guys. So I figured out how this is designed, but two things. Okay. You see these right here? These are where clips go. You put a C clip here and a C clip here. Cable doesn't move. All right. This bolts in directly like this. Now you have to put through here some sort of rod, screw, whatever, and the way they've designed this is to where it goes in here like this, and then you put a screw through here. I'm gonna use this one as an example. And now, this just moves freely. This doesn't move at all, okay? My issue with this is that uh, the cables have to go through here first, which is not that big of a deal, but if you notice that this goes and mounts straight down through here, Okay, that means I need to disassemble all of these things, okay, and then find the perfect size rod to fit through here where it kind of floats in the middle of this without having anything extend to the outside. So we're going to get, this is a, um, this will be an M4. Let's go look for some M4s. Okay, it turns out it's an M5. Perfect fit right here. So what I'm gonna go and do is go and find some M5 pins to put, put this in. So I'm gonna disassemble that system right there on the top for the e-brake. I'm gonna get this in, I'm gonna slide it in, and I'm gonna set it right. But in the meantime, while I'm out, I'm going to double check because I got the fuel stuff right here. I wanna get everything ready for the fuel. So I'm gonna have Jesus put the Lotus on the lift so that I can basically run the fuel lines from the top to the bottom. Well, from the bottom to the top. Yeah, bottom to the top. And uh, I'm gonna see what else I need. So give me a second. McFaddendale is like the worst possible place ever to go to, okay? It's, people are mean, they're just, ugh, poor attitudes. No one knows where anything is at, but I always manage to find what I need. So we've got our M5 head by 30 screws that I can cut off and kind of create my own cotter pin to lock those cables in. Now I did get a five, uh, 530 seconds by a uh, one inch cotter pin also that's possible that will fit, but I have to knock that in. So once I knock that pin in, it's pretty much not coming out. So I kind of prefer the screw because it gives me a little bit more flexibility because once the screw is in there, it's locking the thing in. So I think we're gonna be okay, but I just, I got them both just in case. Unfortunately, uh, we have, I've made a mistake. Last Thursday, Kirk's Mustang, Kirk has a Mustang kind of like mine. Uh, he has a gray Eleanor. Um, and he put a regular old, like expensive 454 motor in there or something like that. I don't even know. Honestly, we'll look at it and I'll tell you when I get there, but we dropped it off at the exhaust shop about three months ago. And, uh, last Thursday they called and said it was done. 
And I swear to you guys, I just remembered that they called us on the way to McFaddendale because like the exhaust shop is kind of like in the hood. And so we're gonna go pick that up because uh, it's been there for a week extra. Um, so let's roll to get that, please. And Uber, wonderful, wonderful job. If you're Uber, you're qualified not to drive, okay? I've never met a good Uber driver, huh. ever. All right, they're always like the worst drivers on the road. Oh, we're about to get a bunch of comments. <laughs> Sorry guys, Uber drivers are, you're, you're just not doing it for me. Shout out All right? Lyft. <laughs> Even Lyft, okay? <laughs> All right, cut. All right, guys, as you can see, we found the best muffler shop <laughs> in all of uh, Las Vegas. It says the best muffler shop. So, it clearly uh, is the best muffler shop. If I'm coming down to 21st and Fremont, <laughs> you know it's the best muffler shop. I've been through a handful of these guys and uh, highest quality work I've seen yet. Pretty reasonable rates. Uh, they do take their time, which is a good thing in, in an automotive uh, world. You want them to be kind of efficient, but also quality, right? So. I'll show you the Mustang. Hopefully it's on the rack so we can see it. I, if not, we're gonna go back to the house, or we're, back to the house. We're gonna go back to the shop and put it on the rack so we can see it. going to be relatively dangerous because the battery is completely shot in this car. Exhaust sounds great, it's quiet, it smells good, the cap's on it, um, and it, it feels good too. I kind of like it, but I kind of don't, you know what I mean? You know, it's like, mine's like brand new. This is like really, a really old car, and the really old cars have a lot of problems. And this one, I can tell you, is gonna continue to have problems for the rest of its life. I don't like it. Feel the steering wheel. I mean, it just so, it shakes so much. The whole dash, everything shakes. It's like, ah! I mean, it's legitimately like it's shaking the camera. If we stall, well, if I stall, we're done. We're stuck. We're done. Oh my god, I got so scared. You got nothing. I got nothing. I hate this car. I hate this car. That's how far it made it. Why? Why do we have to have this thing? Why? Why? Well, after, uh, I don't know, it's been a couple hours since we've uh, had to tow this car back. I'm telling you guys, these cars are just, why, why, why? That's why I ripped every single thing out of my Mustang, the white one, and put everything brand new. Because there's only one way to start. You can't start from an old car and turn it into a working old car. I just, I've never been able to do it, and I don't think anybody's been able to do it. And every time you buy one of these cars that's like done, it always has problems, you know? And uh, Kirk came back and I told him, I was like, look, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm not gonna do it, so now, we have to get back to the Lotus because I room a whole day of working on my Lotus just to go and pick up this car. So um, I'm gonna go back to the Lotus. 
we can end the vlog here because it's already six o'clock, almost five o'clock at night. And uh, I'm ready to start a whole new day tomorrow because uh, today has been pretty eventful, all right? And uh, I'm not even gonna share with you the events that happened about an hour ago, but just let me tell you, they were fun, all right? For, for Mario to watch, actually. So you not guys- Not safe are, either. You, it was not safe. You guys enjoy the night and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, next video.